gentlemen, it's your boy back at it again. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. It's the Rico Report. You guys already know what I do. We bring it every every Tuesday evening, every Friday evening, and it's content creation time, man. You know we always bring something. We always got something under the sleeve. So why does it have to change today? Ah, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Buffalo Fanatics Rico Report. We got a banger of a show today uh i get to be joined by listen man listen let me bring this shit down i get to be joined by one of my fa- actually not one the my favorite bill of all time y'all are you guys have heard me say this before i don't cap i've been saying it i stand on it you guys know what it is man without further ado let me bring in my guy stevie johnson what's good fam <laughs> what let's mean? go what's happening stevie Man, thanks. Man, it's finally, it's finally, we finally here. We, we finally, finally here. here. I, I'm gonna say this, man. I've been, I don't really jump in on anybody's DMs like that, but I hit my, I hit my guy Stevie up. He's a busy dude, so I get it. And then finally, he was like, "Hey, I didn't see this message, man. Let's rock." And here we are today with short notice like this, man. Yo, I appreciate you. Welcome to the Buffalo Fanatics. Yo, the fans are here. We got we got right now 52 people rocking right now. So do me wow. a favor. Smash that like while you guys get in here. S- don't smash it for me, though. Smash it for my guy, Stevie Johnson. Um, and we're going we gonna to get this popping, man. So, sir, before we get into everything, man, how are you? How is the family? How is life in general? Talk to us, man. Yeah, it, it's smooth, man. Uh, first of all, thank you for, you know what I'm saying, stand with me because i mean it was it was a few messages in there <laughs> and i i got to it late you could have been like oh this dude it just threw me out but you know i had to get back with you so thanks for that but, uh you know yeah life so life so far is good you know it's, it's a hustle it's a grind it's, it's everything it ain't all sweet it ain't all bad you know it's everybody's life is the same you know what i'm saying we got all different opportunities listen man we try we're trying to keep our head afloat exactly. doing what we do you know what i'm saying and in the in the midst of all this stuff we still gotta, you know, me show love to people because right now sometimes the nasty side comes out on people, and you're like, man, where did that come from? Right, right. And we all got it, that's the thing. Like we all got that side of us. You know what I'm saying? And no, no doubt. Surprised, you know? No doubt, man. Folks, we have uh, one of the best Bills receivers of all time. I don't care when anybody tells me. That's what I'm sticking with. Um, listen, folks. Three over with the Bills alone has six seasons. All right. We know three. Back to back to back thousand yard seasons. We haven't seen that in a long time, man. We haven't seen that in a long time. My man, my man put it together. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, but I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try. My man yeah, knows man, that's a good one too. We can go up with this one. Like, <laughs> well, it is what it is, boy. But three, like, listen, man. Back to back to back thousand yard seasons, 300 receptions, 3,800 yards receiving, 28 touchdowns. That's our guy. That's what kind of propelled Bills and Mafia. I know, I mean, Del Reed and them created that. No doubt, but you need someone to take the mantle. It's like it's like it's like a it's like a relay. I mean, we create some and we pass it on, yeah, and we yeah. keep passing it on. I'm gonna tell you right now, man. You were probably that first leg that took it off, in my opinion. And then we kept on going. We kept on going. So uh, appreciate that. I love that. Um, and we're gonna get right into it, man. So you're retired. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how's retirement? Yo, I, I can't be. It must have been something kind of like strange to kind of yeah. get used to. Yeah, it definitely it definitely was something to get used to, and that's and that's nothing to be taken lightly because it takes well me being in the league eight years, ten years total. You know, um, you have schedule. There's a schedule every day. Everything's planned out for you. You, you pretty much know when you sleep, everything. And then when you be, when you you know step into this life where you're not in the league and no schedule, that's where things become like okay, so what do I do? You know, you get more to, you have more to think about. You know, there's more uh, time in the day. You know. Um, you know, you're not necessarily obligated. Sometimes the obligations are good for us. It keeps uh, structure around us. And, um, you know, it took me some time to find out what I really wanted to jump into. And, um, you know, ultimately it all circles back into, you know, what, what did I love? Pretty much everything, tapping into everything in, in sports though, you know, yep. um, teaching the youth. Cause at the end of the day, you know, watching what has been going on, you know, not necessarily just with COVID, but, you know, like the, um, you know, police brutalities you know what i'm saying um mm-hmm. you know, it, it, was, it was a lot of things to where you know in the black in the black neighborhood it was it was up in the air you know just crazy and i'm like okay how are we gonna make a change and a lot of people was jumping into um you know 
you go here, go down to the office, go down. Do I felt like you you make the change with the youth. You know, you get no in the youth mind, get them, you know what I'm saying, motivated, positive, and, and learning how to create. And that's that's who's going to take over the world, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, you know, so. Heck yeah, man, heck yeah. Because when I, when I, when, and when you get into that, because I mean, this is off the cuff too, right? Because you're talking about getting with the youth and so on and so forth. So you do football camps, you do all that stuff. What, in your opinion, is that impressionable age where you feel you can reach out and where they 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 can hear what you're saying and they take in with it. Yeah, as a and, and when it comes to the sports world, I would say, I would say like a solid six, six, seven is a good age where they can, uh, you know, what I'm saying, soak in a lot of information as I like that techniques and um in the mental aspect. Um, but you know, I, I always say as as a as a parent, you know, it, it all it starts every day. You know, just say, hey, yo, I love you. You, you know, you did good waking up or brushing your teeth. You know, what I'm saying, no matter you what, know it. <laughs> You got to you got to gas them up. <laughs> and, I, and I feel that. So when I'm looking at Stevie's retirement away from the game, let me tell you, it broke it broke my my heart when Stevie doesn't come back. Right. You have your receiver. That's nobody's done it. We got some talented receivers on the crew right now, but nobody's done it with the quarterbacks that you were doing it with. I'm not shading on anybody, but three back to back thousand yard receivers receiving uh, seasons. Right. And now. You have an off year, some injuries, and then you're not even on the team that you've been repping hard as heck. Hard. What what's going what's going on like in your mind? Are you more like, damn, or are, are you more? This is the business. I get it, but there's got to be some kind of. Like, mm, I wanted to stay. Man, I was hot. Talk I, to me, man. I was, I was heated. Like I, I just didn't get it. You um, you know, you know, I'm I ran through walls. You know what I mean? I, I didn't play when I wasn't supposed to. Um, it was all the personal things that was going through my mind. Um, and, and I just didn't understand, like, you didn't ask for no pay cut, nothing. It was just, I felt like the city just got punked, not the city, but the, the, the business oh, yeah. got punked by the, by the head coach at the time, uh, which was a uh, Marone, you know, and he came in, it, it was, it was supposed to be the change. That was the big change, you know, and he came in. But you know he he did his thing and I, and then I understood though you know that's that's a part of, that's a part of the business you know what I mean they ain't no you can't take it personal. Um, but there's things that you see on the wall. I don't think anybody saw it on the wall. We're like, okay, he had a down year, he was hurt. That happens. That's our main guy. And then Doug Marone, Dougie Marone comes in and thinks he can change the culture. Look where he's at right now. I don't even know where he's at. Oh yeah. man, that sh that shit got me heated because I'm gonna tell you something. I had Jim Monos on my show. Maybe a month, a month or so ago. All right. That's that's Doug Marone's, excuse me, not Doug Marone. That's Doug Whaley's guy, right? And and actually Jim was great, but I had to call him out. So I gotta play a clip for you. So you see, you see the loyalty where the loyalty lies. One second, let me play this thing for you. We're gonna flip the script a little bit. I have a bone yeah. to pick with you yeah, let's and, do it. and Doug Whaley personally. All, all right? right. I absolutely love Stevie Johnson. Love him. My Ooh. favorite Buffalo Bill of all time, and I will ring this bell all day long. You guys draft Sammy Watkins, give up a first-round pick for Sammy Watkins, and get rid of my guy, Stevie Johnson. He was the heartbeat of Buffalo, and y'all get rid of him. Why? Why don't you keep him? Long decision. You were right. That goes back to kind of what we were talking about with chemistry and heartbeat. Yeah, it's scary to get rid of some of those guys. And that's a good lesson learned for all of us. Like, you can't mess with the locker room too much. Mm. Yes. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This I arrived for my dude. I'm telling you, man. So as he's explaining that, you heard it. He says, wrong decision. Wrong decision. Should have kept him because had we had a Sammy Watkins with a Stevie Johnson. I mean, we had some talented guys come in. I think Robert Woods came in. What? We had we had that would have been like this record the core that we got now. We had Robert Woods, Marquise Goodwin, uh, Chris Hogan was on that was on that uh, team. Brought in Watkins, but what they did was they brought Mike. The funny thing, I was going back to the hop to the crib to Cali, and they brought Mike Williams in. You know, and Mike Williams, he was from Syracuse with uh, Marone. Uh, yes. So and he was from the city. You know, so I, I it kind of like it was. I'm like, yo, this is kind of crazy. You know, uh, everybody here, everybody is like greeting Mike Williams to come in. I'm like, okay, cool. We got another dog with us. I fly out. Boom. Then the uh, draft happened the next week. And then uh, Sammy here. I'm like, yeah. And then they then they, they they sent the trade. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Like, that's unbelievable. Like, we Listen. just had the sickest squad. Like, come on now. 
we could have I, a bigger squad. I'm not trying to open up wounds, but it opens up a wound for me because that would have been an ideal situation to have. You know what I'm saying? A guy that can show the young rookie the ropes. You know what I'm saying? And you can get back because nothing better than competition. Okay, fine. Bring in Mike Williams. That was that was Doug Marone's guy. And what he didn't even last that long. A year, maybe two. I'm not even sure. But I, I mean, I see what they was what they was doing. They was trying to keep the city calm with somebody that that was homegrown. Um, and then they were sending me to San Francisco where that's my home, so I wouldn't, you know, say too much about it. Which which was which was cool. That's by our by by that time I understood it was it was a business. You know what I'm saying? That's a business move. Um, it, was, it was just it was just strange how it happened. I told them to pick Matt Barkley and Robert Woods, and you know we circled back and got Matt Barkley, but um, we should have got him that that year with uh, instead of um, e EJ. Not saying EJ oh. was, was the wrong decision, right? You know, I mean, who wouldn't have taken EJ what he was uh, looking like and everything? For sure. Doing. So but, you. you Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But in a sense, I was I was thinking for the team, like you you draft the receiver in Robert Woods early, and then or or the quarterback uh, Barkley, and then you get Woods. Now you got a connection that you can move on to after I'm after I'm gone. That's already there. You know what I'm saying? From college to here, you know. But they went with with Florida State and, and USC. You know, and it and you know it was. So they actually they actually asked you for your input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, because. Do. I was always talking talking about you know how we go get the get somebody else. Can we go get him? Let's try to get this. And you know what I mean. I didn't know really the business at that time. I was just a young baller, like yo, let's let's get this guy, that guy. But you know, it was a whole nother level. You know, when you deal with the business suits at that time. You know, now it seems like it's more of a connection though. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, we got our guy Stevie <laughs> Johnson. Listen, man, I'm gonna tell you when I hear what you're telling me. Because a lot of the chatter right now is, yo, shut your shut your mouth and just ball. You got no say yeah. in any of this front office stuff. But here you are having conversations with front office saying, hey, man, we should Barkley and get you USC Robert Woods. Yo, that'd be a good connection. And then if my time goes and then you guys are set, you're exactly. helping this team out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Lee, man, if they only listen to players, yeah, maybe half the league would be running a little, little better. You know what I'm saying? But these guys that have never played a, a snap in their life, making all these damn decisions, not the greatest. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I digress. Yo, listen, man, you, I'm with my guy, Stevie Jackson. We're doing the thing right now. Uh, I appreciate your time, man. So now that you're out of Buffalo, you're hurt. I can't, I can't see how you're not hurt. But they send you out west. Yeah. Did you, did you grow up rooting for the Niners? Did you grow up rooting for, like, what team did you grow up rooting for growing up? Definitely. It was, it was all of the uh, California teams, uh, none, none in specific. Uh, of course, the 49ers was the first because that's where I'm from. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that, that was cool. Stella. <laughs> so that was cool, you know what I'm saying, being there. But um, at the same time, you know, I was I was always thinking, thinking about Buffalo. Like, damn, I, I, I should have – I'm supposed to be at Buffalo my whole career. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I got to play suit up for the home team. Uh, it was all good. How uh how how like bittersweet was it while you're on your team and you you're trying to get you know what I mean along with your 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 teammates and you know what I mean I'm, and you you look like a guy you could fit in no problem so it's it's nothing but you watching your squad your old squad you know what I mean kind of you know make some make some noise a little bit yeah and you're sitting there like come on man I should be on that team like are you sitting there like bitter as heck are you like nah man it's a different chapter I've moved on yeah no you, you gotta know that it's a different chapter you know what I'm saying. That's that's where things go wrong when you when you sit there super bitter about something, you know. And, and I learned that quick after Pittsburgh. So after that, look, I ain't I wasn't thinking twice about nothing. It's just hey, we on to the next. This happened, good or bad, we on to the next now. You know. Let, let's let's talk about Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, you brought it up. We might yeah. as well bring it up. Man, the up. minute, <laughs> the minute those things happen, slow play by play, you utter those words. Are you like, man, I wish I, sh I should have just kept my mouth shut. Are you like, you know, that's that's the nature of the game. It's the heat of the moment. No, yeah, I I, I feel that's that's my own conversation. My only regret to it is is putting it on, in a uh, public place. Right. And I, I still don't, you know, even thinking about it at the time, I was a little ignorant to the, you know, to the religion and all that and, and understanding and this and that. But we ain't going to dive too deep in that unless we want to. But um, you're a young buck. Yeah, I still feel like I still feel like, you know, we all have those. And that was the first time I ever 
you know, lost a game like that. I, don't, I You know, I don't miss passes at the end of the games. I make all game winners, you know what I mean? And for something like that to happen, I just felt like I let a lot of people down. I was I was beginning to dive heavy, heavily into the religion. Um, I, I'm, I'm in it uh, still, you know, but at the same time, that conversation was, that's a conversation that I have with them all the time. What, what, yeah, what man. Football or not, you feel me? Hey, fam. We 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 all make mistakes, fam. I mean, from yeah. from a man of faith myself, we all make mistakes, man. We think we're on the right path, and we we kind of deviate. And we come yeah. back. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. It happens. Man, it that, happens. That, that, so we're gonna dive, we're gonna dive right into your Bills tenure, your time with the Bills, right? Six seasons with the Bills. What was the culture like before you got there, and then while you're there and after you left? What did you see? Was the big shift? What was the difference? Uh, I was. When Chan, when Chan, when Coach Gailey came in, uh, you know, he kind of he kind of gave us freedom, mainly me and, and the quarterbacks. You know, um, before I got there, it was kind of dull, you know, not in a, to be um, in, a, in a super negative way, but it was just like dull, you know, like nobody was kind of um, break bending the rules, I would say. Um, and and it kind of showed uh, every Sunday. You know, you had it was a, it wasn't um, a perfect mix with the fans and the players on on the field. You know, um, and when Gailey got there, you know, I guess the younger guys was in like myself, and you know, kind of brought that brought that mix together. Because I'm trying to remember if before Gailey, I think it was uh, it was the mortician. Uh, what's his name, Mister Boring? Yeah, Dick Jerron, the mortician. You know what I'm saying? He looks like he works at a damn funeral home. Uh, that's I'm not that I even answered that like that because I love Coach Jerron too. He was he was real cool, but yo, uh, my man was monotone as ever. <laughs> Golly, yeah, he's super and, positive, bro. Yeah, I like. Him. I'm a, I'm gonna tell you those. And sometimes the 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 reflection of your coach is what really goes onto the field. And we were like you said, dull. Wow. We're, yeah. Okay. Hey. You feel you me? Right. You right. I'm not even trying. To, I'm no cap. I'm just saying like more. Jerron is that guy. He's not that guy. He's not that rah rah guy. He's more like you know what I mean. Do your job, this and that, right, and, and right. it showed. And then right. Gailey came in with that southern drawl and said, "Yo, man, do what we do. Let's let's spice things up." Yeah, that was that was yeah. You approach you you accurate on that. You accurate. So, who was your partner in crime when it came to bending the rules to kind of like get things going again? Um, You know what, like bending the rules, it was, I was really the only one bending the rules. Uh, Thank day. you. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't really call it. I, I would, I would say Fitz because Fitz was doing things that was helping me out, which is like, a, that is the ultimate blessing, you know, have three um, straight thousand yard seasons, which I think we'll get, uh, we'll get that with uh, Allen and Diggs. But um, it takes a lot to get, to get that, you know, it takes a quarterback, it takes a line, it, it takes a coach to believe in, in, your, in uh, the receivers. Um, so Fitz was doing a lot of things that wasn't robotic, one, two, three, and do this. You know what I'm saying? He would, he would slide. He would he would sacrifice his body a little bit more, you know? And, you know, we see he's a fine-tooled machine now, but, you know, he was he was doing a lot of sacrificing for me to make Yo, when you when you see Fitzy still rocking it in the league, I don't know what horseshoe this man has as, up his butt, but, like, he lands in situations – where you're like he he becomes a starter and he's doing his thing. Like, what is it about this man that's so damn lucky? Opportunity, Stella. Come here, come here. Facts. It is opportunity. Yeah, opportunity. He, he gives opportunities. Is mm. is why he's always in a situation where oh now he's a starter. Stella, come here. So Thanks. when you see him doing that, and when you see him giving opportunities to guys like yourself, or he goes to Miami and he's and he's battling with a freaking top top ten quarterback. And usually top 10 quarterbacks should be able to beat out a 37, 38-year-old. But you see Fitzy coming in and, and wrecking things, man. He goes to Tampa. And for the first, I mean, I think, what, six games straight, he was just rocking 300-yard games. There's something about this guy. Now he's in Washington. He's going to get a full opportunity. Golly, it makes you kind of want to get out of retirement and say, hey, let's do it one more time. Look, that's why every quarterback that I get with, every young quarterback, I, I, I tell them about Fitz. Fitz, he's not out there to be the perfect quarterback. He's, he says, okay, I got this this five star athlete or four star athlete, three star, whatever. This 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 great athlete that's in the NFL right now. Let me just throw it up to him and let me give him an opportunity to, to make a play. And more times than not, that athlete will make the play for you. Um, the thing with the new quarterbacks, the younger quarterbacks, is some of them come in with the with the expectation to be, oh man, I can be perfect. I can be temp, go ten for ten, or 
I, you know, I, I make this read look here, but it's, you know, it's more than that. It's more to it than that than just the X's and O's on the books. And Fitz understands that, you know? So let's, let's go to, to your time in Buffalo. You had a time where you had three monsters at the running back position, two and a half. I, I gotta, I gotta keep it real. Cause I, I, I talk about two and a half because CJ Spiller, I had my, I had love for CJ Spiller and then it kind of dipped on me. That's, that's just me. But you have Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Fred Jackson, CJ Spiller. Yo, how was it being in a dance on a team with those three in the backfield or in the locker room? Like, what was that like? Man, I, I mean, it, it was it's kind of special. You don't really know what you have, you know what I'm saying? In that sense. Um, because everything just gotta mesh, you know what I'm saying? Everything just gotta 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 be together. CJ was still he was still new in it. Um, Marshawn was kind of in and out because at that time I think get him and Gailey wasn't really locked in with each other so it, it was it was a little bit more that that, the, that that people can really see from the outside looking in on that on that nah situation. man i boy i'm with you man that's that's stella that's the that's the dog yeah all what of kind of dog all of a sudden Stella. come on what kind of dog pitbull pit oh you got a pitbull yeah you got it from you, you yo every yo tell me about these pitbulls man i off the cuff because some people be scared of these pitbulls because they sometimes have a mind of their own um, because they could just snap, or is that a myth? You just gotta. It, it's. I mean, it can happen with any dog. I would say, you know. But the pit bulls, they so big. You know what I mean? They, they they powerful. But you know, you you handle your business like you're supposed to with them, and not treat them like they're just an the outside. You know what I'm saying? Um, animal. You know, you got to be with them as as babies. I I had them. I, I had pit bulls since I was growing up. You know. So yeah, facts. Yeah, we do sign language together, and all that. So what? So, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got a really she really a human low key. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I I've never seen I've seen people uh shed tear for when something tiny happens to to their dog and then I started to realize, man, like this is not just you just not an animal, man. That's a family member. Yeah, yo, it's, at it's, the end of the day. So I, I I start to understand the love that people have for for pets. Um now, we're going to trench not too much though because I want to stay with your time with with the bills because you played alongside. I think. I think. Um, to came in 09. To came in. Yep. I think I was, it was 09 that, was that he came in. Yep. You had a year with To. Yeah. What? That was nice. So then you had a year with To. So what was that like? Did you learn anything from To? Because at that time he was coming on the down end of his career. You know what I'm saying? But he still had some time. He had, he had production down year with To. Uh, that year. So what was that like learning from? a hall of famer right now yo that was it was great man like all my celebrations came from watching to doing in in the city a candlestick you know what i mean that bankhead bounce um so when he came in it was it was great but the main thing i learned from him was his competitive his competitiveness man like it don't matter what day it was it don't matter how cold it was he was out there during one-on-ones hey line up come here come here right now mm. and, and he was going at you you know what i'm saying so like the whole stereotype of if you just watch like ES um, um, uh, entertainment on, on television, you would think uh, he don't do the extra work or he don't go extra hard. He don't sweat at practice. He just shows up. He's a uh, blessed player. He's a physical specialist, but he works. He actually works. So that was good for me to see as a second uh, second year player. It makes me it makes me wonder when you see a guy like T.O. comes in and I ask you, what did you learn? You're like, yo, his competitive nature, man. That kind of made me kind of turn things around. Had they brought Sammy Watkins to stay with a Stevie Johnson, who knows how Sammy's career turns out if he yeah. doesn't learn a few things from the vet, a guy that's done it. Yeah, I, I can dig that. Um, but at the same time, he he got a, he got a great career. Stella, please, please, please. Debatable. Stella, come here. Thank Debatable. You. I mean, great career. Hey. He's uh, he's uh, he's he's I. Right. He's doing what he. I mean, uh, let me put it. Let me let me be real. Injuries have kind of derailed his career a little bit because it could have been something special. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was excited when Sammy Watkins came through, but I was yeah, broken right. at the same time because my guy Stevie's gone. Right. And then we saw some good things happen, and then obviously they traded him um, for whatever reason they felt that just wasn't working out. But I feel that things could have been different. It just takes a dynamic of a Stevie and a Sammy yeah. Watkins, and we probably still talking. Man, for sure, because it's kind of tough when like I, I, me and Lee had what three, four games maybe, and Lee was killing it. And then next thing you know, Lee gets traded. So 
you know, it was it was kind of you don't really get that whole element of, OK, I can rely, really rely on this other dude to take the top off or, you know, get a first down or two, you know, aside from the run game where, you know, Freddie's a, a monster, you know, what I'm saying so he can drag a few people. But it's different when you only got really one guy that they really locked in on um, on defense, you know. Um, one more thing about about T.O. I want to go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, your floor is yours, baby. Yeah, he also show, uh, taught me that if it don't make sense, why are we running this play? You know what I'm saying? And and, and he spoke up on it in a, in the locker room, and you know that was one thing that I figured people uh, didn't really like T.O. for for speaking up. They say he talking too much, but you know it, it it made sense with what he was saying in the meeting room. So he kind of developed me into a, a student and seeing the game a little different, you know, on the offensive side. Um, so that was that was something that was pretty cool. Also, so speaking of teaching, you know what I'm saying, and 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 I got I'm gonna segue into it because it's been a topic. Uh, I see the questions are coming in the stat chat, fellas. You don't like you think I, this is my first time asking questions? Y'all already y'all already know I got these things set up for my man Stevie. But teaching, there are times where you I guess you got to pick your spots when you want to say, well, why are we running this play? Because then you look like a diva. Then you look like the guy that's questioning everything, man. Just do what you're told. But like, hold on, well, that made no damn sense. Why are we doing it? Where's the fine line where you gotta watch what you say? Or is there such thing? Yo, say what you say, and if they if they don't, they can't deal with it. That's their that's their problem. But you speaking facts. What's the what's the balance? Um, the fine line is is if you're the one getting called out on a play, I wouldn't be the one to be quick to saying, oh well, we shouldn't be doing. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's not the time. But like, let's say you do something good, or or maybe somebody else does something. And you just, hey, coach, what, like, why you think we should probably run this other play instead of this one at this time? Because I understand where you know what I'm saying. You just the get way you. That, you, that you present it. You know what I mean? No, and, I hear you, man. Yeah, yeah, that's something that I had to learn over time because I, when I was young, listening to To, like, oh, he talked to him. Then I was kind of doing it the doing it that way, but not really there mentally. You know. So, you know, it's just something that you got to learn. And, and that's why I like the, the whole teaching aspect, um, talking with the youth and getting them right. I like that. And, and speaking of teaching and 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 making people your sons, um, there were a few DBs around the league that gave you some issues. But there's one DB that just never really gave you issues. And that's the New York Jets cornerback, Darrell Revis. Yeah, yeah. What, what was it that you, like, you're a bully, first and foremost. You kept on taking this man's lunch money. How are you gonna do that to the man? He's got to make a paycheck. How'd you do it? <laughs> nah, he, he was he was one of the best, man. I just I just looked at how he was uh, stopping everybody else, you know, and I just under just made it simple, you know. He was he's patient, um, and he and he's strong, you know what I'm saying. So, um, every and then I looked at the receivers that he was going up against and what they were doing, you know, and it was it was easy to find and like it probably took a minute or two of just watching film, you know what I'm saying. These guys are all doing quick moves, you know what I'm saying, um, quick twitch type moves. He, he not going for that. You know what I'm saying? You really got to get like wavy with him. You know what I'm saying? It's not even about the move with him. It's just about distracting him for a certain amount of time. Mm. And that's all that I was doing. So, you know, my routes was looking kind of kind of messy because, no, I'm not running routes. I'm just distracting this this elite DB so I can get him here. And then I'll, you know what I'm saying, that last second. Easy. Listen. People don't understand that it's the the running route is just you can't just run up and uh, 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 and make a cut. It's an art. It's, it's an artwork. Art. You got to do the film. You got to do the study. You got to figure out what this guy does. And you said something that was really crucial, right? It's with him. He's patient. He waits on what you're doing. He's not biting on your first quick move because he knows you're trying to stem him and go into something else. Right. You're like, nah, we're gonna play a little hoop. Exactly. You know what I'm saying you I'm gonna got- cross you over like I AI and make my moves. So. How much of that coordination did you have with Fitzy? Um, right? Are you guys talking about that often, or is that just something that just materialized? Yeah. Once again, like that's a that's a blessing that happened. You know, um, one th- this is how me and Fitz even started. I I was getting on the airplane. He got, he walked on the airplane, sat next to me or whatnot. We didn't know that we was both going to Buffalo. He this was a stop. I had a stop in Arizona, and he seen my socks. I had like some blue socks and some white socks on. He was like, "You going to Buffalo, or whatever?" He's like, "Okay, yeah, I'm Ryan, this and that quarterback." I'm like, "Okay, cool, Stevie. I got uh, you know, I'm, I'm going. No, I didn't just get drafted. I'm coming, coming, uh, I'm coming back." But uh, he's like, "Okay, cool. We had the whole flight. You know, next thing you know, we uh, we run a scout team because we had um, excuse me, Hardy, J- JP, yeah, no, no, Hardy, and then everybody. Oh, James Hardy. That's right. That's right. James Hardy. 
So so I wasn't I wasn't playing with the ones or with the twos. You know what I'm saying? Me and Fitz was really doing scout team stuff at that time. Um, so we was just vibing. Like they they didn't they didn't tell us anything. Just they put the paper up. Y'all run this play. You know, and then me and Fitz was killing them. Like, mm. hey, that's mm. they start making up nicknames. I was like, okay, yeah, we kind of got something here. And shoot, we got the opportunity to play with each other, and it, it was it was just like that. How how often do you and Fitzy kind of keep in touch? Yeah, uh, we, every every season I send him a message here and there um, to start it off, and then throughout the season, you know, uh, he always goes on one, of course. Um, so yeah, we we speak every season, every season. I like that, man, because Fitzy, Fitzy's one of those guys that Buffalo will always root for, no matter what team he's on. Even when he was with the uh, the Miami Dolphins, we kind of like, yo, you can't sleep on Fitzy because you don't know if you're going to get Fitz magic or Fitz, you know what I mean? Right. Fitz tragic yeah, yeah. is one of those things, right? So, yeah. and like you said, he doesn't he doesn't go by like, I got to be the best. I got to go 10 for 10. He's just yeah. trying to make a play. He's just, right? trying, to make a play. He's just trying to make a play. You know what I'm saying who can make a play? I can't. That's that was Fitzy a little bit. So I got I gotta give him love for that. So we're gonna we gonna do something, man. Um, we're gonna go around the league. I want your opinion because I know you you pay attention a little bit to things that are going on around the league. Maybe you don't. Um, this Aaron Rodgers fiasco, right? Aaron's not happy. And when these quarterbacks are uh are doing, I mean, they're the most important player on the team. And right now, he's not happy. And the and the word is he doesn't want to play for them no more. And now they're trying to give him more money. In your opinion, is that one of those? Is that a? Is that is that the answer to everything? Yo, just give this guy more money. He'll be quiet and he'll be straight. Or is it? Is it done? It's done. It's over with. Uh, yeah, it, it, go, it goes both ways. You feel me? Um, it's either gonna be the team that's gonna get rid of the player, or the player get walks away from the team. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, ultimately, we didn't think Brett Favre would ever be a a, a Minnesota Viking. We thought he'd be a, a Packer forever. You know? Right. And then there you go. He played with the Vikings, the Jets, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this is one of them things. This is one of them business things I don't even pay attention to. I hear you. All right. So here's one that you will pay attention to because at at the time it does affect you. So uh, le- I think it was right tackle. I think J- Juwan James from the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. This one's a heated topic because. Yeah, that's tough. You got to be out there making, you know what I mean? Making sure that you're in shape. So when you go to OTAs and you do all that stuff. You know, you're not in shape because you, God forbid, you show up like a fat slob. They're gonna be like, yo, part of the contract says you got to be this, right. that, and the third. Right. Yo, fam, you got to go. So yeah. now he gets hurt. How you feel about teams saying, yo, you got hurt on the outside? S- sad for you. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I like, feel? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that at all, man. Because ultimately, there's enough money for him to, to still be there and rehab his leg if you want a pay cut or whatever. But like to completely let the, let him go, uh, they they cut him completely, right? They, I, I'm not sure if they cut him completely, but oh, I know there's the conversation that your 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 contract's not guaranteed, fam. So yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not I haven't caught up too much, but that's the talk right now. So now, as a player, I'm a I'm a second year player, third year player. I'm not established yet. I'm trying to crack this roster, trying to make this team. I'm trying to work hard. So am I supposed to stop all of a sudden and wait till I get this facility and do my thing, or right. what do you do? Yo, you got to keep working. You know, I, I just I don't think the Broncos is going to send the right message if they uh completely dis- disown this this kid, you know. They got to do something to take care. This shouldn't even be in the, in this shouldn't even be spoke about, you know what I mean? Mm. It should be a topic, man. You and know? it's and and the thing is it's not like he went skydiving and he yeah. fell and he broke his leg and he's like, "Yo, fam, what are you doing?" He's right. working to get better for the team. Right. And then y'all y'all go and play this, man. So does that put a distrust between a player and a team where you're like, yo, you know what? This is how they're going to treat us. Then I'm going to have to play hardball now. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. For sure. For sure, man. I mean, you, you, they do it all the time to the players. You know what I mean? Um I, I don't like I don't like the I don't like the fact that they that they treat them like this. You know? Nah, I'm I, I'm totally with you, man. Yeah, uh, you ladies and ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Smash that like for my <laughs> man, Steven Johnson. Smash that like for the Buffalo Fanatics. It's the Rico Report. Uh, I'm I'm geeked out because I got my my favorite on the on the other side, man. My man's doing it. There it is. That's my guy right there. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this damn right. So, you know what? I'm gonna just do one side. I'm gonna just do like this. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy, man. Uh, so we here with Stevie. Uh, we talking about things around the league. I I can't leave without bringing this player up, Tom Brady, Mister Brady. So yeah. Mister Brady. Leaves 
um the AFC East as the daddy. He did. He was our daddy, man. He spanked us every goddamn time he had a chance to. Uh, we tried our very best to, you know what I mean, go at it. I, I'll tell you this, though. We played the Patriots the hardest, and we just sometimes we just fell short every single time. I remember the one game, though, that we took them down with uh, David Nelson, with that David Nelson touchdown. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I, I, I have to bring that up. So when Tom Brady uh, leaves the AFC East, are you like, man, you should have left a long time ago, man. We would have been nice. What do you, when you look at that, what do you see? <laughs> no, nah, I, I don't even think about that until you just said that. <laughs> yeah. Like, we just thinking, hey, who, it don't matter who's in our league, you know, whoever's up at on, on Sunday, you know, we got to we gotta try to get this dub, you know. It, it wasn't really any, anything specific like that. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Now, um, we're going to move on to, to the current team right now, right? Josh Allen. Josh Allen's that dude right now, man. 6'5", to 230, big boy, cannon of an arm. The man only is ascending. He came in as a rookie, raw as ever. Second year, major improvements. And third year just went off. Third year, he just went off. So when you see a quarterback, and I know you hear his name, are you seeing some big time vibes with the Buffalo, like the Buffalo Bills going forward? Can we, can you see them winning the Super Bowl with a guy like Josh Allen? Yeah, for sure. And and the great thing is they got a nice um, upstairs business suit game to match mm. players on the field. So their their opportunity to win Super Bowl just skyrocketed. You see, they, we was only one one away. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy that the kid's talent. He's like a Fitz 3.0 basically. He he gives opportunity. The, the passes he make, the ability that he has to make the oh my goodness, it's filthy. Um, and then now we're, but then they're adding pieces. You know what I mean? I think we got Emmanuel Sanders. Like that's come on now. We just continuously getting better with our with our team. So you, you know what I love? Yeah. I love the fact that you said we yeah. we adding pieces. You still Bills Mafia, man. Oh yeah, all time. Every, Yo, every that's that's what I'm talking about. So now you see a Josh Allen goes for like umpteen amount of yards. I mean, mad touchdowns, and you see this roster is a fairly not an old roster, a young roster, man. You got a Cole Beasley. He's not too old, but he's he's getting up there. Emmanuel Sanders is up there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then you got Stefan Diggs that's not even 30 yet. We got a young, a nice young team. Right. When you look back at the team that you were on, where do you feel you were missing something that what was gonna set you over the edge? Whether it was on the offensive side of the ball, defensive side of the ball, or was it front office? We we're missing something up there. Um you know, I just think it was the time. It was the time because I don't think people was really moving around and, and making those big trades or big splashes. Because um, I, I, I would want to say the, the front office, but then at the same time, they did go out and get Mario Williams. You know, they, they signed him to a big contract. We thought he would, you know, turn things around. Um, so I guess they was making efforts. But um, I just think it was just bad. We, we took a lot of steps back when we got rid of Lee. And then obviously um, letting Fitz go that one, that one season with EJ. We could have let EJ learn under Fitz, um, or we could have let Thad Lewis play because Thad was ready, um, mm. and, and EJ could have just you know learned to learn the game a little bit better, and then he would have been he would have been ready to roll in the second year. Yo, you speaking some facts, man? Because things that you that you're saying makes complete sense. You you draft a, a EJ Manuel with with really no one to kind of like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he can't he can't mentor behind. Right. So I mean, and and I feel bad for EJ because I think he got a raw deal. I think exactly. they went Marone Marone screwed that man heavy, dude. It wasn't fair at all. It, it really wasn't fair at all for him. Nah, not not whatsoever, man. So I, I, I get I get disappointed when I hear about things like that. So here's my question for you when it comes to Josh Allen, right? Thousand yard season, then you come back with another thousand yard season. So now pressure's on you. I got to do it again. Then you do it three times, right? So every time that you're coming up with these big time years, how much pressure is on you? And I bring that up because Josh Allen just had a massive year in his third year, fourth year. We're looking to have the same, the same results. Is that pressure? Uh, can it be too much on a player? Uh, with is, is different with this team. I don't think is as much pressure because there's a lot of sol uh, solidified players, I would say um, on this team mm. from the offensive standpoint and the defensive standpoint. So for Josh to be throwing, having these great seasons and st statistical seasons, he can just go out there and do it and have fun and, and expect, okay, we'll be we'll be in the hunt every time at least. We'll be in the hunt. Us on, on at our time, 
Like I, I would have that thousand yard season, but I, I don't know. Maybe maybe defense won't hold up thirty of uh, um um this this week, Max. or or maybe offense we won't. I won't do my job. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I've done before. So it was it was just one of those things where we're we're everybody's trying to do the most. You know what I mean? As opposed to this team now, where it just feel like they just got it. You know what I mean? It's something special with these dudes. How to how the secondary can connect with each other. Um, you know, the linebackers got, got a good communication with each other. The offense is con- is clicking with, with Beasley, Diggs, and, and Allen. Um, you know, we had John Brown when he was here. It looked like he could stay forever also. Right. You know, it's just it's just something about this whole unit now is just it's special. So hopefully they can uh, make a make a solid push. And, and, and as a Bills fan, I mean, should we? I've been rocking with this team for a minute now, and – that's what we hope for, but I know how the pressure can mount, especially for a quarterback, because now the whole league is looking at Josh Allen. The whole league now, because you had naysayers, right? Oh man, he he got drafted in the first round. Even I was like, oh, damn, we took Josh Allen, boy. We could have had Baker Mayfield. We could have had Josh Rosen. Ugh, throw up. Anyway, but the point is, now that you you're going into your fourth year, they've they've weaponized you. I wonder if the pressure is going to be too much, and does he do it again? And at quarterback position, man, they scrutinized heavy. Yeah, they, they do, but then you got to take into what Josh has to do. Well, he don't have to do anything that I say, but all he got to do is think of, look at where he is. He in Buffalo. Like, they going to love him regardless of the things that he's done. So the outside world, who cares what they thinking or saying about him? You know what I mean? If he have a good game, bad game, okay, whatever. I know I got the love here in Buffalo, so I'm going to strap up again, and I'm going to give and, and I'm going to go out there and have fun slinging this ball. You know, so he Yo, don't I, pressure at all. Man, ladies and gentlemen, we got our guy Stevie Go. Johnson in the building. I'm ringing my bell for my guy Stevie Johnson. Stevie, we got a game that we play here on the Rico Report with the Buffalo Fanatics. I hope you're ready to play this game. Um, I I called it. You know, what I'm saying two words because I wanted the two words that came to mind when I would bring up a person, a thing a subject, whatever the case is. This is where I kind of, you know, me loosen you up a little bit and, and see where your head's at, all right? Yeah. I didn't tell you what I'm going to ask you. I'm just going to put it out there. And <laughs> instead of giving me the two words that come to your mind, you're just going to give me your first thoughts, all right? We're going to call this first thoughts. Are you ready, sir? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. My man, Stevie Johnson, the building. Guys, this is the Rico Report. Do me a favor. Smash that like, right? And share this on all your platforms. And let's get this thing to a... Let's get this thing to 500 likes. And if, if you feel sweet, let's get it to 1,000. So I got my guy, Stevie Johnson. We're about to play a game called Two Words, but we're going to switch it up to First Thought. So give me a moment. Okay. Here we go. First Thoughts, when I mention Tom Brady. Uh, goat man, he he the greatest. He the greatest of all time, right? Now. I I mean I'm in agreement. This dude is doing it right now. He did it for so long with the damn Patriots, and he says, you know what? I'm gonna leave Bill Belichick because everybody says, oh, it's Bill Belichick's team. I'm gonna go somewhere else with a with a head coach that's got black coordinator, defensive coordinator, black offensive coordinator, and we've got representation. Everybody wants to say, uh, uh. nah, we got representation. That's what's key because we get passed over all the time. And then Tom Brady goes over there and wins the Super Bowl. He wins the Super Bowl. That's 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 LeBron James and who? That's go going back to Cleveland and winning championships. Come on now. Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. All right, cool. So, uh, first thoughts, Josh Allen. Josh Allen. He's going to be he's going to be future goat. He's he's the future goat because I mean I see. Well, actually, actually he got some time because uh, Mahomes Mahomes got got to get it right now. You know what I'm saying? He got that championship. We just need a Super Bowl. Then gotcha. we back on that same level, you know what I'm okay. saying? We're competing for it. Just that ability to, to how they throw in the ball. Is is Josh Allen, can he be as good as Pat Mahomes? Because right now, Pat Mahomes, a lot of people say, like, yo, he's a half a billion dollar man. That guy is that dude. There's nobody on top of him right now. Is Josh Allen not far behind? Not not at all. Like they're they're the same. It's just, you know, he got that Super Bowl on us. Um, you know, at the time his guys, his guys did it, did it for him, you know. Josh is he, he can throw the same type of pass. He got the same talent, the ability, all that. You know, we just got to get that ball for the uh, recognition. Yes, sir. I like that. All right. First thoughts. Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs. Oh, he a beast. He a, a straight beast. You know, I, I, I like everything about about dude game. He, he don't he, he ain't uh, passive about it. You know what I'm saying? You can't guard him. He go out there and show it off. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Nothing's wasted. He, he, I like he, that. Um, Daryl Revis. Daryl Revis, patience. I'll just keep thinking patience, you know, because when I think about, you know, who's the top tier cornerbacks, he's one of the top tier cornerbacks. And what made him great was patience. So any of you guys, you guys listening to this, you a DB, patience, work on your patience. Work with your patient. So if it's not Re- Revis, who was another corner in the game where you're like, yo, he gave me some fits, man. I, I couldn't get past this guy, man. This guy gave me some challenges. Who was it? Uh, no, it, it nobody really. It, it was um Good answer. more type like a um it was a three bell that that the Chiefs used to run. And okay. I, that was when I was like, it was just a, a, a type of coverage. But um the best cornerback I would say was was uh, Drayton Florence. People know Drayton, Drayton Florence. Yeah, Drayton Florence. He was he was very witty. He taught me a lot about how to uh, get by, uh, how how DBs think, um, what we what they look for. So he really opened my mind to a lot. I appreciate. It. You know what? You mentioned the Chiefs, and I got to bring this up because this this irks me to this day. And I know you're gonna remember this. So we're marching against the Chiefs. Jeff Tool is our quarterback. Tool time. Oh, I know you know what I'm talking about. We get to the goal line. Man. Stevie puts on a move, pop, 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 boom, wide open. That's crazy. Jeff Tool throws a pick six. It, he got so, listen, Stevie so upset he walked off the screen. <laughs> I get it. I'm telling you, I was I was so heated that day. I said, get Trash Tool off to the sideline because you had him wide open, and we win the game. Man. We win the game if you score that we went Boy, was that heated, man. Here's you... a story about that. Like, go we ahead. Have practice. We have practice, and I'm like, I'm like Jeff. Look, that play is not go work because they they kept telling the throw it to the outside guy who's got the under, um, and then there's the, the slot guy in the middle who's got like the post, and then there's me that's got the uh, you know, if the guys in front of me, I just juke and I take the middle, and the whole time is press. I'm like, look, Jeff, it ain't you ain't gonna have enough time to hit that. You know what I'm saying? You, you just watch me in practice. He doesn't hit me. I'm open on it. We ran it two times that week. Get to the game right before the play. I say, look, Jeff, just watch me. Just watch me. And he go back there. And I mean, he was listening to the coach. That's, you know, you can't you can't really fault, fault the guy. You know, he listens to the coach. But that's a, that's, that's the difference when you got a, a guy who's an alien and fits who will give you that out. And then you got, you know, a, a young quarterback who was at the time, he was a robot. He was just listening to what they were saying. So you see what happened. You think they would just listen to the best receiver on the squad that says, look at me. If you want to make a name for yourself, look at me. And he goes and throws a damn pick. Says, yo, did you cuss his ass out when you got to the sideline? No, I didn't. Because like like I said, I let him know. I said, look, Jeff, just watch me. Because that is not going to work over there. If they press, it's not going to work. Just watch me, yo. <laughs> and, uh, yo, yo I, I didn't mean to bring that up. I didn't say nothing. I was just like... I got like do it. Yo, I'm good not. for you, man. Because I would have been given like, yo, we're going, we're having a team lunch. I would have been staring his ass down. Yo, square yeah. up. We're gonna square no. up. Let's go outside right now. Square up, man. No, no, you, no, you got no, me. No, no, you got no, me. No. We went back to practice. It, it was nothing. You know, it was nothing. It's just in the in that moment, I, I'm just thinking like, yo, I, like I'm telling you, just listen to me, and, and it's there for you. You know, let, <sighs> let that let the if if we don't get the touchdown because I missed it, let that be on me. You know what I mean? Facts. Don't don't force it here when I'm telling you, yo. Just hear all right. All right, here we go. Your first words when you when I bring up J. Cole. J. Cole, uh, lyrical, lyrical genius. Lyrical genius. You want to know some both I don't want to say bozos. There's some there's some individuals out there that feel he's overrated. Yo, people putting too much hype on J. Cole. Um nah, I think he get he get the proper respect. You know, he he came he came from the bottom and he worked his way up and he did it right. Um yeah, there's there's nothing negative to say about it. You know, when I say lyrical genius, I'm not saying he's the greatest one. You know what I'm saying? But you know, he got he got it from his from his hood and, and look where he is now. He in the, he, he wasn't he in the league shooting scoring buckets and stuff. Yo, he, he's doing it all, man. Yeah. He's doing it all right now. He's in he's in a, he's in Rwanda in a Rwanda professional league. Shit, yeah. give that man some props. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mess with it. I mess. With that's it. that's what I'm talking about. All right, so um, the rapper, the game, the game. That's yeah. my guy. Yeah, game game. He uh, he's the same like 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 Cole. You know what I mean? He jumping in. He 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 supports his community through hoop. Um, you know what I'm saying? With his music, with advocating. Uh, you know, for the streets. Yeah, I mess with game. He uh, he had me in the studio. You know, oh, I know. It was, yeah, it was cool, man. I mess with game. Game's one of my favorites, man. Out there, man. Like I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't care what anybody tells me, man. Lyrically, 
He is nice like that. Don't let that, you know what I'm saying, six foot four frame think he's just a bully. That boy is witty yeah. and he can come with it. Yeah, he gifted. He gifted with the with the words. Oh, no, no question about that. All right, so here we go. Um, the best place to eat in Buffalo. Uh Allentown Cafe. Shout out Why? to you know, because because that's the homie. That's that's it, you know. Allentown Cafe. So if you're recommending a place, yeah, it's Allentown yeah. Cafe. Yeah, yeah, hit up Allentown Cafe. All right, yeah. what, what's the what's the best thing to get there during the eat? Yeah, you gotta hit the breakfast. The, the breakfast is the best time is the best time. Uh now that's the only time that I had it. All right. So Allentown Cafe. You guys yeah. heard it here, man. Yo, go go support the business. Allentown Cafe. Let's go. All right. Um what are your first words when I say Marshawn? Your first thoughts, Marshawn Lynch. <sighs> yeah, he, he different. Rare. Man, rare. Rare. Like, yeah, Lee, you could. He, I mean, we had a chance to have him on the team, so it was nice to have yeah. the dude. I went to that that Monday night game when we played the uh, the Cowboys. Mm, I'm still hurting right now, and I saw Marshawn Lynch in person. God, Lee, that boy is a big fella. Man, look, it's I got a story about him as a rookie. You know, talk to me. Look, so we working out in L.A. I'm not on the team right now. This is all the young guys. And Marshawn walk in, he had like uh, maybe some Jabos on. He had his t white tee on, he had his beanie. Um, and, and he just come in, he lift up, he lift like 300 or something pounds. I don't know what he was, but he just walk in and lifting 300 pounds, no stretch, no nothing. He had the jeans on. I was like, man, this dude is different. And, he is different. Uh, you know, he, no, he, he's he's different. Me. So we're going to keep the, we're keep this to energy because then I'm going to bring up Freddie Jackson. Uh -huh. Yep. So First Freddie, thoughts on Freddie Jackson. Yeah, he uh he played too much. <laughs> Freddie Jackson? He, he played too much in the locker room, man. He always trying to wrestle and <laughs> pick him no. up. No. Yeah, man. Come on now, Freddie. He looked mad serious. I mean, that's too serious, but, like, not a guy that would be clowning around like that. Yeah, nah, he keep everything cool, man. We had, we had some real good characters, man. Shout out uh, to Shard Choice also. That was his running mate. Oh, uh, to Shard, yep. They, they, all, they all trying to wrestle everybody in the, in the locker room. I like that. Freddie okay. And dang, they're all alive, man, so. Give me, uh, give me your first thoughts on uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, a creator, you know. He, like I said, creates opportunity. You know, he creates opportunity for for guys, man. Ah, I like that creator. Yeah. All right, um, Trent Edwards. Trent Edwards. He was uh, he was too cool. He was too cool in a, in, in a way. Say just it, boy. Like, Say it with your chest. It. Yeah, yeah. You know, just just let it flow, man. Like, don't don't. I don't know. Like you think, like you thinking too much. Yeah, like you thinking too much. Just let it go. Like, come on, just play football with it. You know what? I think he saw. I think he saw that um, Jeff Tool was was throwing picks left that right, left right center. He's like, yo, I don't want to be like that, man. But yeah, that, yeah. Jeff Tool was a little after. But I, I'm just saying, when you a Trent Edwards, I feel like his game changed when he got hit by Adrian Wilson. Yeah, yeah. After that, that boy was never the same. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't understand the game at that time either, but um, now I, I understand why he was getting it out too quick, hitting them. <laughs> when you see a big boy like that coming your way, and you get your brain scrambled like that, I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but you got you got the snot bubbles coming. Yeah, that'll that'll get you. That'll get you for sure. Um, game, and we we're gonna wrap this up soon because uh, I want to get I want you to get your your thoughts on EJ Manuel. Yeah, right now we on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we on it. Yeah, EJ, like I like I said, I feel like he had all the skill in the world to be the guy, but I think he, he was just pushed in too early. You know, mm. some people can get thrown in now. RG3, he got thrown in and, you know, he did well his first year. There's a lot of guys that can do it well their first year, but um, in a situation that we was in, with, we're not um, we're not in playoffs, you know, we're, we're trying to be that good team. If you have a bad year, that might that might tear a, a young quarterback up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's facts. So, yeah, I mean, it will be. He was rushed. He was rushed in his. He was rushed and, and unfair. Unfair, man. You get you bring off Kyle Orton off the damn streets. Yeah, come yeah. in and just just take over like that, man. I wasn't I wasn't for that. Um, Doug Whaley. Uh, Whaley was cool. I didn't, at the time, I was a I was a young dog. I didn't I didn't understand what was going on up, upstairs like that. You know, okay. He, I would see him here and there. He was he was quiet. He wasn't really the man though at at, at that time. Um, so you know, I, I don't really know too much about him. Bills Mafia, uh, thorough, yeah, thorough. They uh, they hold they hold it down, win or loss, whether you're doing good or bad. They see who you are. If you are part of the community, like you fan, so yeah, they thorough. Yo, I feel that man. So, last part of our segment is called "Say It With Your Chest." 
And I give an opportunity to my guest if they got something on their chest and they need to get it out there. Whether it's like, yo, the my favorite food, and you guys are not me- you guys are not messing with this, you guys gotta try this. Or uh, there's an up and coming album coming out by this person, and you you got you have an opportunity to say it with your chest right now. So I'll give you a moment to, to ponder. If you have something to say with your chest, you can. If not, I can put you in a position to say it with your chest. I can say, you know I mean, Stevie, talk about you know what? Let me let me do this freestyle. If Josh Allen is your quarterback and not Fitzpatrick, are we talking? 4,000 yard season, 5,000 yard seasons. Oh, what are we talking? And and, and I need you to, to stand on it and, and say with chest. You know say it with your chest, baby. Look, with no injuries, of course. I feel like I, I will have a thousand yards consecutively. Um, you know, there's no there's no DB that can that can definitely that can stop me. You know and you just Got to have a whole squad with you at the end of the day. Yo, listen, man. Stevie Johnson and Josh Allen. Golly, man. SJ13, JA17. Super Bowl. Y'all seeing it, though, right now. Y'all seeing it with with Allen and Diggs. It's it's, the 3.0. You know what I mean? They they just elevated. They an elevated version. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. So, Stevie, talk to us right now because you're going to be coming to Buffalo soon. Right? So, uh, at the end of May, give or take. Uh, Are you trying to do a camp? Uh, football camp for for some, I want to I want you to talk I want you to touch on that. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm super excited to finally get back to Buffalo and uh, and help out the youth. I done tagged up, I done partnered up with my boy Eric Westfield with uh, Buffalo Go, and uh, we put together a camp with uh with, with with the athletic director at Amherst Central, and we'll be throwing four sessions from 9 a.m. to 12 on uh, the 29th, and then from one to one to four, you know, and um. You know, it's it's something that, I, that I've been looking forward to because you know I feel like I'm I'm a part of this community. I just got to help out uh, now, and this is the great opportunity to do it. And I like that because you're you're teaming up with Buffalo Go. So uh, we've teamed up with Buffalo Go with our our design of uh, Buffalo versus everybody. Yeah, I see. I see. Oh, you know what I mean. So we might we might have to hit up uh, Eric and say, hey man, try to put something out there and and get the youth involved. And we'll we maybe we'll uh, we'll jump in there and have some kind of involvement with that and try to help out. Yeah, so. Yeah. That'd be that'd be super dope, man. So uh, any charities that we that that you're part of that you want to touch on? Um, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the main one is is really, you know, club. I, I got this club HBHF, which is which is what is just our business. You know, we got youth sports and, and community awareness. Um, you know, we do workshops. Um, you know, we, we set up in different places. We got uh, HBHF AZ out in Arizona uh, running seven on seven leagues. You know, you can look them up. Um, Man, yeah, like it, it, it's it's a, it's a lot as lot that's going on between this HBHF as far as bike club, you know, just all type of sports and and uh, cooking classes like painting, art, you know, we 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 do it all, you know what I mean, just to make sure you know people are are focused and, and being active, you know, handling business and having fun, man. That's what it comes down to. So speaking of handling business and having fun, we we spoke a little bit earlier. I, I played a little something for your ear. Yeah. You you in or you out? Uh, yeah, we, we can do a, a little. We can do a oh, little. Yeah. I, I kinda, oh. <laughs> you you stretching that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I don't really. So, I don't really do oh, earlier today, earlier in the green room, uh, my man Steve and I were talking, and I said, "Yo, man, um, we have a we have a nasty beat that I know that he has a couple sixties in them, maybe an eight bar. I don't know, but if you want to spit a little something, go ahead. It's all yours, baby." Yo, I I see you vibing with it. I see you vibing with it. It's it's tough. I put you on the spot. I put you on the spot. So that's my fault. I can't do that to you. I put you on the spot. But Stevie, you have been primo. You have been great. This was this was great for me because I got a chance to, to chop it up with with my all time fave. Um, and it's love the Buffalo the Bills Mafia always got love for you. Buffalo fanatics always got love for you. Um, make sure that you guys tune in. Um, to Stevie's uh, Stevie's uh, um workshop that he's going to be doing for players. It's going to be receivers and DBs. Yeah, is that correct? No, it's, it's all ages. Seven to thirteen. Um, you can check it out on hbhf.club. 
And um, yeah, we'll be at Amherst Central, uh, the 29th, May 29th and, and May 30th. Um, it's all age, um, I mean, 7 through 13, but all positions. All positions. I yeah. appreciate that. All right, so uh, you guys be sure to tune in. It's, it's Stevie Johnson, man. I appreciate you, dog. Yo, man. Things that could have happened in Buffalo, man, but it didn't happen. But, yo, happy retirement. Yo, take care of the babies, man. You got three kids, boy. Take care of them. You feel me? And, uh, yo, oh, there you go. Yep. Yep. There you go. There's the young buck. Where's Stella? Stella's got to get in there because Stella was trying to get some love earlier. Yeah, Stella right here. There, there goes Stella. There goes Stella. All right, man. So it's SJ13. Let me let me see the fan, man. Let's go. There you go, man. Yeah. There's the pit. There it is, man. That's love. Stella was trying to get shine all night. Yeah, <laughs> There's the shine, man. So, man, I appreciate the love, man. Yo, you great one. Uh, you're one of the great ones, man. I don't care what anybody tells you, man. And you as humble as can be. God, leave, man. And you keep it real. Thank that's you. The, that's, the, that's, yo, that's the California way, man. I feel that, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's the Rico Report. It's the Buffalo Fanatics. It's my guy, Stevie. Uh, yo, I got to get this thing right. Boom. I got hey. it now. I got it now, man. I got to get it that shit right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, have yourself a great night. And Stevie... Appreciate you, man. That's love, man. We'll catch up soon, man. And uh, have yourself a great one, my G. One love, y'all. One love, man. Respect. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Stevie Johnson, baby. I tried to give him the platform to 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 spit a couple bars, man, but it didn't it didn't quite. I could the audio wasn't there, but I know he can spit. I know he can.